Hey, welcome, welcome to the family. I'm so glad to be with you. Come on, Victory Family Church. I'm Pastor Ben and I'm the student ministry pastor. And right now we have Echo Service. That's for fifth through eighth grade. Come on guys, make some noise. God is so good, we can still gather together. I wanna acknowledge our online community. And so if you could go ahead and like the video, then comment where you're watching from. Come on, we want to engage with you online and also share it so that we can all strengthen our friends. We've got such a loud voice. We have so much influence. So let's share what God is doing in our community with those around us so they can walk in right relationship with Jesus. Come on, somebody. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do when life doesn't work out. What do we do when life doesn't work out? And listen, if you've missed the last few weeks, I want to make sure that you stay up the speed with us. So go ahead, go to YouTube and, and follow Victory Students. It's the white circle with the black V. S subscribe so you can be in tune and in line with where we're going and what we're doing as a family. Come on, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's how we grow in our faith. That's how we're strengthened. So good. Listen, today after the message, we're going to be breaking into groups. We always break into groups because it's where we find freedom. It's groups are so important. It's where we find freedom. And, and I want you to go ahead and, and text this so that you can get plugged in. If you've not been in our community for any length of time, text that so that you can get onboarded and assigned to a group. Now, my friends that you've been coming for some time, listen, I, I want to encourage you, don't go to group alone. Invite somebody to your small group with you. The, the number that your leader has sent you, go ahead and send that to somebody. Bring somebody with you. Don't go to groups alone because I believe that today is gonna be so powerful and we wanna take people along the journey with us. Come on, somebody. We're opening up our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, and while we're turning there, I want to remind you why we exist as a church and a youth group. We exist to help all people, somebody say all, all people realize that God loves them unconditionally. And you know, every time we get together, even as an online community, I say all the time that we want you to know God. And, and here's what I mean. I really believe that through the message and through small groups that you'll get the tools and the resources to grow in a right relationship with the Father. Amen. Come on, somebody. God is so good. Friends, you got to take notes today. Note takers are history makers. Write down what God is speaking to you. Store it in the well of your heart because in due time, that'll come up and out of you. And if you're good at taking notes, go ahead and tag echo.victory on Instagram so that we can share that and, and take our whole online community along in the journey with us. If they missed today's message, come on, we get strengthened by the word of God. Healing comes from the word of God and we wanna include them on that and in that. First, uh, first, uh, <laughs> first Thessalonians 5, 18. Say that 10 times fast. But as we open up God's word, I believe that God's gonna come. He's gonna encourage us. And no matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, no matter what's going on, God is bigger. No matter how big coronavirus seems and looks, God is bigger. Come on, Echo, I came to preach today. I came to encourage us, and I believe that we're gonna be strengthened and encouraged, amen? 1 Thessalonians 5.18, here's what the Bible says. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I just love this. See, Paul is telling the Thessalonians the basics to the Christ Christian life, and one of those is to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, notice Paul doesn't say in some circumstances, but he encompasses all, every circumstance. That includes the good, the bad, and the ugly. See, normally you and I respond to bad circumstances by complaining, whining, pouting, anger, moping, destructive thinking, having bad thoughts. But watch what Paul is telling us. He said that we should give thanks in every circumstance, every situation that we find ourselves in. He doesn't say to give thanks for every situation. That's not, that's not what he said. He didn't say that, neither did I. But he said in every circumstance. See, there's always something to be thankful for. Despite what storms you might have or what situation you're experiencing or whatever mountain is that's standing in front of you. Maybe you're dealing with bullying. Maybe you're struggling with friends and relationships. Maybe you feel like you're alone. Maybe your parents have split. Whatever the circumstance is, whatever the situation, no matter what it is, listen, God, God does not cause bad things to happen to you. That's not God. God does not cause harm to you, friend. 
That's not God. There's an enemy. There's a real enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Come on, he's coming to take you out, to maim you, and, 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 and claim you. But Jesus... But Jesus has come to give life and life abundantly. Come on, he's working with the enemy. has tried to hurt you for your good, to bless you. God's got a plan for you. It's, through, it's for you to prosper. You're the head and not the tail. There's always something to be thankful for, to thank God for in every situation. I'm not saying to thank him for the bad situations. That's not what I'm saying. Even though the situation might not be something to thankful, be thankful for, we've got to train our eyes to see what no one else sees. We've, we've, got to, we've got to have eyes like Jesus to see what no one else is seeing. And I believe that God wants to speak to us today. I believe that God wants to encourage us. And I believe that, that there is so much to be thankful for, more than you realize. My question is to you, what do you do when life doesn't work out? What do we do when life doesn't work out? In fact, you could go ahead and write down the title of our talk. When life doesn't work out, what do you do when life doesn't work out? When school isn't going as planned, when the relationships don't last, when the family member gets the doctor's report that's horrible. Come on, what do you do when life isn't playing fair? What do you do when your plans are not prevailing? The Bible says in Proverbs 16, verse nine, many plans does a man have in his heart, but God, ultimately, his plans will prevail. Many plans we can make on our own, but ultimately, God's got a better plan. God's making a better plan. And I wanna submit to you today that God's plan is far superior than your plan. In fact, I would just, I would just encourage you to surrender your life to him and let him drive the car. Let him have the wheel. Stop fighting him for control because I've learned that when, when my life isn't working, God is up to something for me that's good. In fact, when life doesn't work out, God has something working that's so much better for me. It's a great place to say, come on. It's a good place to say, amen. That's a good place to write in the comments and say, preach it white boy, holla at your boy. Like it's okay. Come on, we, we, we've got to say yes to the thing that we can't see yet. We've got to say yes to the thing that's yet to be completed. And by faith, we've got to receive what God has given us and take it by faith. I want to talk today about what do we do when life doesn't work out. And I'm going to pray and I just believe that God's going to come. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to encourage us. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you that everyone who's under the sound of my voice, that God, you're doing such an amazing work right now, that you have your way in this service right now, Lord. I thank you that every word that comes out of my mouth, let it fall to the ground in Jesus' name. But everything that's from you, let it take root in our heart, God. Help us to see you, Jesus. Open our ears so we can hear the Holy Spirit and do what you can in this time and in this setting. And I thank you that we're gonna leave service in Jesus' name with our head held high. Come on, somebody. And everyone said, amen and amen. Look, I, I, I don't know if you're aware, but about two and a half years ago when Mila was born, she almost died. And so I remember being in the hospital, in the emergency room, and we had just, Alyssa had just given birth to Mila and we're holding our beautiful girl. So amazing, so wonderful. And very, very shortly after, all the doctors came rushing in and they took Mila. And they, and, they, and they took her into the back room and somebody else came in and they said, hey, listen, we're, you know, we, we gotta have Mila because right now she's struggling to breathe and so we gotta help her. And she said, don't worry, it's not that big of a deal. A lot of the time, when children are born, they, they take a big breath of amni amniotic fluid, the fluid that they're inside the mother's womb, and they, they breathe that in, and we just got to help them. We got to clean them, clean them out. And so about three hours pass. That's not normal, friends. Three hours pass, and we're, we've not seen Mila. We've not heard from the doctors. I keep going to the front desk. I'm like, what's going on? Finally, the doctor comes in, and he gives us a horrible report. He says, right now, Mila's inside an incubator inside the NICU. And what the NICU is, it's like the intensive special care unit for children to help her. She's inside the NICU and, and she was born with pneumonia. She's very sick. And when she was born, the, the pneumonia is, it's, it's killing off her white blood cells because she doesn't have the antibiotics. Look, I'm not a doctor. I might not be saying things right, but she doesn't have the immune system built up to fight this right now. And so we have to help her. We've got her hooked up to a ventilator. We've got fluids and, and, and all kinds of stuff just helping to preserve her life right now. And she is struggling and gasping for air. And he said, because she's struggling, her vital organs are functioning, but the rest is shutting down. 
So he said, this is, this is what it looks like for Mila right now. For the next 10 days, she's going to be in this intensive care unit. And then after that, our plan is to have her go into a, a step-down unit for another 10 days. And we'll just evaluate what it looks like from there. But it's very serious. And he left. And I got to tell you that when he presented that to Alyssa and I, we just, we broke down. We, we wept. We would have been speaking God's word. We're like, Lord, we're Christians. We're believers. How could this happen to us? How could something like this happen to us? And right there in that moment, we made a decision. We made a decision to stand on God's word, period. And so what we did is we called the, our, our three closest friends and, and, and we just told them what was going on. We didn't go to Facebook. We didn't go to Instagram. We didn't go to all of that stuff because we needed people with faith in our life to be standing on what God's word says because there's no other option. Our daughter is healed and whole in Jesus' name. So we gathered around these faith people and we just began to pray over her life. And, and so Alyssa and I, we went down to the NICU and, and we, we, we just had to lay hands on her. We had to lay hands on her to see her healed in Jesus' name. And so we like, we put our hands into the incubator. In fact, I, I got a picture here. This is Mila while she, while she was in, in there right after being born. And I'm telling you, friends, that even, even to look at this photo right now, it just breaks my heart. It was so hard. There, there's another photo real quick. I, and, and we just laid hands. Alyssa had her hand on Mila as we were speaking life over her and praying for her. It was so tough. So our friends came and, and, and they prayed for her and, and another one brought all these scriptures and we taped them. We taped them to a, a, a Mila's incubator so that every single time a doctor would come in, they would speak what God's word said over her so that no evil or wicked thing would come out of their mouth for our daughter. She's healed in Jesus' name. 24 hours later, we met with the doctor again and, and they, had, they had all of, the, uh, all of the reports and the photographs of her chest x-rays and they said, Mila's, Mila's doctor report is completely different. Her pneumonia has changed 50%. 50%. She's doing very, very good. Another 24 hours, 48 hours later, they came back to us and they said, listen, there's no sign of pneumonia whatsoever. But because we gave her antibiotics and all this stuff, we have to hold on to her. And so we're discharging you because you've been in there for the 48 hours, you guys are okay to go home. And we don't have a room for you to go to a step down unit yet, uh, but, but hopefully something opens up and we still have to hold on to Mila. So Alyssa and I, we got in the car and, and on the way home, I remember leaning over to Alyssa and just telling her, I said, "Hun, if God were to bless us right now, are we ready for it? She said, what? I said, no, like, like if God were to bless us right now, would we, would we be ready for it? Like we need to go home and we need to pack our bags because in Jesus' name, we are getting a room. We are getting the step-down unit. So we came back to the hospital the next day and, and sure enough, when the doctor's meeting with us, he said, it's a good report. And guess what? We also have a room for you. And we got plugged into that room. Five days total, they discharged us. It went from 20 days, at least, at minimal 20 days to five days, we're out of there. And, and when we were leaving, the doctor said to us, he said, listen, we, ha we had all of the pictures we had all the blood tests. Your daughter had pneumonia. She was born with it. Her, her, her blood, you could see the infection in her blood. She was fighting something so severe. But she's leaving today and there's, there's, there's no trace of anything in her body. Come on, somebody. Come on, God showed up and did a miracle for our daughter. And I told him that was Jesus. Jesus did that. And I gotta tell you, friends, that problems are a platform for God to show off. Problems are a platform for God to show up and to show off. Listen, God is often working in your life before you know that it's him. He's at work behind the scenes and we've got to trust his, that he'll be faithful to weave it all together for his purposes and for his glory. Here's the thing. You can't always change your circumstance, but you can always change your perspective. Oftentimes when life doesn't work out, it brings uncertainty, it brings doubt, it brings fear. But whenever we walk forward into the dark, darkness, that's when our faith can come alive. And because God's promises are true and what he told us in the light holds true at night. The Bible says in John 16, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart because I've overcome this world. Nothing that has happened to you is a surprise to God. He's not shocked. 
He's not put off by your problems. He will give you the strength and the power and the grace to get through it. And if he did it for me, friend, I know he'll do it for you. I want you to write this down. We've got to learn how to move past disappointments, delays, and destructive thinking. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, no matter what's going on and how big the storm is, there's a way to be thankful to God. In every circumstance, there's a way to be thankful. Although the situation might not be something to be thankful for, we've got to choose to thank God for things. And when we give thanks to God, when we give thanks, giving thanks is an action. And it's more than just a feeling in our heart. It's, it's more than just, no, you've got to speak. You've got to say, thank you, Lord, for this. Whatever it is, you've got to fill it in. It changes our heart. It changes our posture. See, the Bible says having a thankful heart opens the door for God's presence. That's Psalms 104, verse five. Did you know that it breaks down any walls that we have towards God? It allows us to receive all that God has for us. That's the exact reason when we gather together in purpose and we have a normal church service that we open with praise and worship because it changes our heart posture and allows us to receive from God's word. Philippians 4, 8 says this, that you'll do your best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Do that and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. We've got to choose to be thankful by controlling what we're thinking on. The Bible says that we're to take our, thought cap, our thoughts captive and submit them to God. Translation, you can't think something negative and say something positive. You can't do it. Have you ever tried? You can't do it. You cannot think something negative and say something positive. Let me say it this way. You cannot think something negative and speak God's word. You can't do it. And when you do that, it changes the way that you begin to think. Come on. Maybe someone has said something nasty to you. Maybe your day has started off on the wrong foot. Maybe you're, may, maybe you're focused on how mean people are or how frustrated you are with your siblings. But you gotta change your thinking. You gotta begin to focus on what is going right. I know I'm preaching to somebody. I know I'm encouraging somebody. Come on, you gotta focus your mind on what is good, on what is true, on what is life-giving. It'll change your perspective and it'll allow you to see your situation differently. Say what you're thinking out loud. Say that positive thing out loud because it'll, it'll help you. It'll cleanse you. It's the reset button. See, I knew that God was up to something. I knew that God was doing something amazing. In fact, I had as, as the background on my phone at that time that no matter the circumstance, I have to change my perspective. That was the background on my phone. And in that moment when that all came out and that doctor left the room, before Alyssa and I went down to see Mila, the very first thing I did is I went to my phone and I went into my note section and I started pulling up all the scriptures, the hundreds of scriptures that I have on healing. And I began to speak that over my daughter. I began to speak that over my life. I began to claim that because God's promises are true. Yes and amen. And what he told us in the light holds true at night. Come on, somebody. You gotta lean into the word of God. You gotta have that in the well of your heart because note takers are history makers. I hope this is stirring somebody. Listen, God will use your bad times to benefit you. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Friends, you're called. You're called. God is gonna use the bad times, the bad situation to make something that we can be blessed by, that we can be changed, that'll help us go to the next level. It's all for his glory. Even though God didn't cause the bad thing to happen to you, he will use every bit of it, every single bit of it. In fact, the Bible says in James 1, 2 through 4, consider it a sheer gift, friends, that when tests and challenges come from all sides, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open 
and shows its true colors. So don't try to get anything prematurely. Don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. So the next time that you have a hard situation, next time you're in a bad circumstance, remind yourself that even though it might be an awesome, an awful moment, God is bigger. That God's working behind the scenes and God will never leave you or forsake you and he will use all of it for his good and his glory. We gotta choose to be thankful. See, gratitude is the antidote to two things that hold us back the most, fear fear. And anger. Fear is why we don't take action and anger is why we get stuck. And you can't be angry and grateful at the same time. You can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. Being thankful is the reset button. It's the cleanser of the soul. And and it's about giving thanks. And when it's about giving thanks, you enter into the presence of God. And you allow him to bless you and show up beyond your wildest dreams. And when you're in the presence of God, Where his spirit is, there is freedom. And who the sun sets free is free indeed. Come on, somebody. Psalms 107 verse 1 says this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And his steadfast love endures forever. God always rewards a thankful heart. Giving thanks is how we push through all opposition, all struggles, all circumstances. It's how we move past disappointments, delays, and destructive thinking. And when life doesn't work out the way that we planned, we can give thanks because God is working things for our good and his glory. Come on, somebody. Friend, I wanna pray for you as we close today. I don't know what situation you've got going on. I don't know what background you have and what you're facing right now and how big the storm is. But what I know is that God's grace is sufficient. And so I want to pray for you. And I believe that that, that God's power is all that we need. It is sufficient. And where we're weak, God's power is made strong. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And I, I just speak over every single person under the sound of my voice. That Lord, supernaturally, you're making a way where there doesn't look like there's a way. God, that our hope is rising. Our strength in you is growing, Lord. I thank you that our faith has increased today, God. And if you did it for me, you'll do it for them. And so, Father, I thank you that no matter what it is, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And you're working things, God. You're moving before we even know it's you. You're moving right now in our lives, God. And we set our eyes on you, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, Jesus, that you're making a way where there doesn't look like a way. In Jesus' name, we all said amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Make some noise. Hey, look, if you've not made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, I wanna pray with you. In a moment, I'm gonna ask that you bow your heads. See, Jesus said this, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man, no man comes to the Father except through me. So it doesn't matter how many followers you have on Instagram. It doesn't matter how many likes you get on TikTok. All that matters is Jesus. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if you declare with your mouth, you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead three days later that you'll be saved. So I'm gonna ask everyone right now, wherever you are, that you close your eyes and you bow your heads. Everyone that's in the room with you, we just close our eyes and we bow our heads. Friend, if you've not made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, I wanna give you that opportunity And if that's you, you can just go ahead and say right now, Lord, that's me. Lord, I wanna follow you. And what we're gonna do together, everyone that's in the room, we're all going to pray together as I'd I'd never embarrass you. I'd never single you out. We're all gonna pray out loud, loud enough where you can hear it. Say it where you hear it. And we're gonna pray and Jesus Christ is gonna come into our life. We are saved and we're heaven bound. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus, you're the son of God and you died on the cross for my sins and you rose from the grave three days later. I'm a child of God and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey friend, congratulations. Today's your new birthday. Just go ahead and write that down. I love y'all.